Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Well, after numerous calls for her resignation, Office of Personnel Management Director Catherine Archuleta has stepped down. This after the personal data of millions of people were stolen in a major cyber attack. Archuleta had been on the job less than two years. Jack, do you think this breach was her fault or does it matter? Did she have to go? Uh, it doesn't matter, Morris. If seen as an isolated incident, I wouldn't make much of it, but this is not an isolated incident. This is a chronic, systematic, and terrible failure of the president to manage. How many IT breakdowns has the government seen? I mean, it happened at HHS. It happened big time with our veterans at the VA. It's almost unbelievable what's happening. I attribute this, this is called failure to manage. And this is what we said in 2008, when you bring a man to the White House with no experience doing anything, these problems happen. They would be better known, except the press really protects them. Now, Jack, Archuleta's departure mark uh, marks the fourth high-profile resignation following a scandal for the White House. Eric Shinseki, Kathleen Sebelius, Julia Pearson, and now this. Many have criticized Obama for not being able to manage his administration. So, Mark, is this a leadership issue? I know. The IT issues existed under George W. Bush. In fact, they were extremely severe with regard to the Veterans Administration like and everything else. They, they, this has been a long, ongoing problem. It apparently is very hard for our government to get a good handle on IT. I don't know. I, I think she probably did have to leave. It's unfortunate. She did have less than two years to try to fix the problems that were there before. But really, we've got to remember what this is. This is a cyber attack. This wasn't the systems going wrong. This was the systems failing to protect against a determined adversary who's trying to get into our systems. And this is something that we've been warning about for a very long time and all our governments but have Mark, to be careful But Mark, you've got to be fair. You've you got to be fair. You're a fair guy. You have to understand, if you compare, you can't compare the IT failures in the Bush administration with the IT failures in the Obama administration. The only I mean, difference is we have the Chinese veterans, true, HHS. In their defense, they, they're all in the wrong place at the wrong time. IT is still so antiquated in the government and the hackers are so much better now than they were five years ago. That, that's true, and it was true 10 years ago, it was true 15 years ago. Part of the main problem is funding, with the Republicans cutting funding for all government agencies. Oh, my agencies. goodness. Now we're that gonna, leads us not having the money we need to give us the best IT Jack. system. And I guess you'd blame funding cuts on the HHS snafu and the veteran snafu. So Republican funding cuts cause with, those with things, too? With more funding, the government can run more appropriately. But, yes, the government gets, is dramatically cutting funding, and that is entirely the oh, As they say, more money, more money, let's move on. As the Confederate flag came down in Charleston, South Carolina, the issue was creating an uproar on Capitol Hill. House leaders pulled a spending bill off the floor after an amendment that would allow the Confederate flag to be flown at certain federal cemeteries. The measure caused a split among Republicans, and Democrats immediately called it an embarrassment to the GOP. Jack, your party has had a hard time reaching out to minorities. Could this hurt? It could hurt, yes, but I think it's the it's the right thing to do. One thing that, one thing you have to understand: if I thought the Confederate flag was a symbol of racism or somehow linked to slavery, I'd be the first one. I'd agree with Nikki Haley, but I don't think it is. I think it symbolizes mostly states' rights. I would argue that at a time when you have Big Brother, when you have NSA listening to our phone calls, oh, Jack, I think come that, on. I think the Confederate flag is more important than ever as a symbol for states' rights. And I'll How tell you something else: states' Morris. rights are treason. I mean, it's more of a treasonous thing than the well, states' rights. Well, I don't rights, know if you look at you know. No, Morrissey, I think it symbolizes, remember the Jack, Southern... you don't get to determine what it symbolizes. This flag was the flag that flew over the Confederacy that committed treason against the United States in order to keep slavery on, uh, uh, well, you're around. Getting into a very you can't complex, decide what it means, you're getting Jack, into a very complex, an historic symbol. You're getting into a, a very complex one. historical issue, which is the causes of the Civil War. The North has one view, the South has quite another view. No, that's, the causes are slavery. Here. The All South right. wanted to keep slavery. Mark, to you, the uproar over the Confederate flag has spread nationwide, including including Virginia, where you may be a delegate soon one of these days. Is it time for the flag to go? I think it is. I think the flag, particularly in Mississippi, How still has an enslaved flag. Absolutely. Okay. The Confederate oh, flag Morris. belongs now, in museums. I, I wanna... It belongs in history books. It belongs over a, a few Confederate graveyards. Point of That's order, it. Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Now, you can play this tape back. Someday our great friend Mark here is going to be running statewide in, in this state. He's a great candidate. You, can better, you better believe he'll go statewide. And when he does that, this tape might be played back. I guarantee you at that time, he might not be no, so vociferous about the Confederate 
Confederate flag. It belongs only in the context of the Confederacy. A Confederate War Memorial, a museum, something like that. It does not represent Virginia. All right, we'll save the tape and play it back. But, uh, Mark, you basic, you're basically shooed into this job, but you have no opposition, so you basically got the job, right? Uh, I, yeah, that's true. I am All running right. unopposed. All right, we'll watch that, too. All right, let's switch gears to the race for the White House. After Donald Trump's remarks on Mexican immigrants, other presidential hopefuls came out against him. My party is in a hole with Hispanics. The first rule of politics when you're in a hole is stop digging. <laughs> Somebody needs to take a shovel out of Donald Trump's hand. I thought he was to say take it out of somewhere else. Jack, by all accounts, Trump will be on the stage during these upcoming primary debates with legitimate politicians. Is he damaging your party? In some sense, yes. In some sense, no. It's a hard question, Morris. You have to remember, people like Lindsey Graham, a lot of the Republican Party is very jealous of Donald Trump right now because he is successfully doing what nobody else can, and that's move to the right. Rubio wants to do that. Bush wants to do that. Scott Walker wants to do that. Uh, Lindsey Graham wants to do that. They can't, but Trump has found a magical formula to move to the right. Now, Trump knows... He's moved uh, off the cliff. Well, he's moved... Off, obviously, his language was inartful. Obviously, he shouldn't have used the word rape. His language? Uh, is, it, very How about inartful, his extreme. But he did that. Trump knows what he's saying. He did that deliberately. He, he did that deliberately the id of the Republican Party he represents what Republicans don't say publicly what they say privately that's why he's moving up in the polls that's why he's an embarrassment to the party for psychology majors it's the id the ego the super ego all right meanwhile Hillary Clinton didn't miss the chance to jump on Trump's comments saying they represent the whole of the Republican Party they are all in the you know in the same general area on immigration you know they don't want to provide a path to citizenship they range across a spectrum of being either grudgingly welcome or hostile toward immigrants. Jack, was it fair for Hillary to make that statement? Republican Lindsey Graham wants a path to citizenship. Oh, I think, look, the, the whole idea, no, it wasn't. Substantively, Hispanic families want what white families, Asian families, black families, what everybody wants. They want the American dream. They want prosperity. They want success. They want their boy to go to Harvard. They want what Americans want. This idea that you're going to market to Hispanics and market to blacks, market to whites, I think it's a horribly racist thing. I will say this. One thing, the broader point about Hillary Clinton, Morris, she continues to, to hog the spotlight. I think it's politically foolish. If I were Hillary, we'll see if Mark agrees, I would get off the stage, let Republicans shoot it out. All of her coverage is going to be negative. It's going to be linked to emails. It's going to be linked to the foundation. Jack, you're changing the subject. I'd let me ask out. you this. Why, why can't we allow Mexican and Latino immigrants the same thing that other immigrants, my great-grandparents, came here? We are a nation of immigrants. Why can't we welcome all, all right, I'll why answer your question. single out Latinos let me answer your question. treat here them it is. unfairly? It's a good question. Let me answer it. The answer is... The, at the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, those people, our forefathers, came here legally. The people in the country now, a there lot no of them laws came against here it. illegally. When my great That's the difference. When my great-grandparents came here, if you were not an anarchist and you didn't have a disease, you got in. We didn't close our doors I like understand, we do Mark, today. We're a nation Let's of open laws. our doors. Do you support more legal immigration? You, you have to understand, we're a nation of laws. Which Jack, you wanna, do you support more legal immigration? It, uh, it, it's a broad question. It depends. What kind? Who? How? People here's who the want issue. to come here just like my great-grandparents Mark, did. here's what you have to understand. You have a situation now where there are millions of people that have broken the law. This is a nation of laws. Once you say... You no, know, when you make a law you say, that's ridiculous and people break it, it's not you so. understand why. Once you say, for reasons of expediency and money, just like the Chamber of Commerce says, we're going to allow law-breaking, it doesn't stop with immigration. That for, cancer first can of all, spread. It's moving, moving violation. On. During that same interview, as we see more of the immigrants there, Clinton talked about the Benghazi investigation. I've never had a subpoena. There is nothing. Again, let's take a deep breath here. And out. But at the least, one lawmaker says that's not true. Representative Trey Gowdy says the former Secretary of State received a subpoena, a subpoena in March of this year. All right, Mark, what do you make of Hillary's remarks? Is she lying? Well, no, you didn't show the beginning of the clip where they asked her when she deleted the emails. She deleted them in December. She got the subpoena later in March. And that was actually about her private emails. She gave all her Benghazi emails long before she even received the subpoena. So it's a little bit taken out of context here. All right, so Jack, any response to that? 
Oh, I not. think, you know, I, I don't care whether she remembers the subpoena. At this point in her life, there are probably so many I can, frankly, in fairness, I can understand her regretting. But the bottom line is this, Benghazi's not going away. I think the majority of Americans believe, certainly Republicans believe, that the president allowed four people to die Jack, because Republicans he, he was afraid her. he was coddling no, radical Islam. Jack, and his desire to coddle radical Islam the let a U.S. ambassador die. The Republican from the House exonerated Hillary and exonerated the president. This was the Republican report. I don't know how you could keep waving the bloody flag of Benghazi when the Republican House members exonerated her. All right, well, we'll go after the emails. That's what the Republicans are focused on now. In the meantime, many critics say Hillary has always been leery of the press, but during a July 4th parade, her handlers tried hurting the media. There they are. Come on, little doggy. Come on. Uh, Jack, what do you make of this? Well, I, it goes it, it goes to back to what I said, Morris, about five minutes ago. Why is she continuing to hog the spotlight? I think it's foolish. If I were she, I would disappear. And but she wants to keep uh, she wants to keep playing games, even to the point of uh, having a silly rope line. I mean, you would think somebody, all the bright people. I know a lot of the Hillary people. They're very bright people. You would think they wouldn't make such a silly PR mistake, but they did. Now, if that had been a Republican, we would not hear the end of it. Mark, what do you make of that? I mean, I, it was, I suppose, an innocent mistake try to keep the press at bay, you know, so they don't get tangled with everybody else. But come on, that was well, obviously she, bad if you were planning that strategy. I don't know that I would use a rope. I, look, I think she has a right to meet with voters and to separate herself from the press and meet with the press at a certain time and meet with voters when she wants to. I, again, I don't know that the rope was the right strategy. Well, at least a Republican might be a red velvet line, don't you think, think Jack? <laughs> at least. At least. Be it's sure, it's like a nightclub. We'll, we'll be restrictive. <laughs> All right. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank, Thank you, Mars. Thank Jack. you, Mr. Delegate.